Here we go. Um, I'm glad you all are well. Um, you know, like I hope that you stay well. A few people, I have 60 students at SDSU, and I know of two who are ill. Um, and uh, hopefully they won't, they'll, they'll be okay, and they'll still be able to keep up with class. But I wanna let you know, if you do get sick, let me know. Um, we can work through all of these things so you, you don't get behind and um, it'll all be okay. So let me, um, I feel like I'm trying to be empathetic and I also feel like I have all these things I have to do and so I'm really torn and it's just a weird time. I wanna leave time at the end for group work. And so let me go ahead and, uh, you know, there's one thing I wanna do before we get started because I know I've had a lot of students who they're having trouble finding things on Canvas. And so I wanna, before we move too far into the semester, I wanna introduce some things to you so that you can find your way. The homepage, pause me at any time to ask me questions um, because I want you to be able to navigate this. So the home page is a really great place to get started because I will generally put this week's module, which I did not. Oh, yes, I did. Yes, I did. So you can see we welcome to week three. You can also ac access that by going to modules. Now you can ac access all the assignments by going to assignments, but I don't recommend that. I recommend going to modules, that week's module. And the reason for that is that so much of our material is on Canvas. And if you try and bypass the Canvas pages that have instruction and explanation, you will miss some assignments and you will miss some instruction and you will feel confused. And I don't want that for you. Also, I want you to be able to follow what we're doing. So um, this is supposed to be week three. Um, it says show up on Monday and Wednesday, and that's false because we did not have to show up on Monday. Um, but at this point, you're starting to see the patterns. I will always say something friendly. Um, and then I'll give you the objectives for this week, and I will give you all the activities and assignments. And then you can click to next. Um, you should have already been here, and you had two essays that you got to read, and then you had a quiz on rhetoric. And this was based on a reading that I gave you last week. Um, and then you can go to next after you take the quiz and you will find this week's slide deck. And just by following the next, you will see all the things. I know several of you have already submitted this. Questions for me? Okay, then let me get out of this and go to um, the PowerPoint. Yeah, so much of what we do is on Canvas. So if I have readings, I'm going to put them on Canvas. If I have information for you, I'm going to put it on Canvas. It's sort of like Canvas is our textbook. And if you don't go through every single page, it's like you said, I don't want to read that part of the textbook. And so that's kind of weird. That's not what you're used to. Um, it is how, how you access assignment links. It's how you turn things in. It's how you get feedback from me. It does everything. And because it does everything, it can be confusing. So this is the agenda for today. I want to discuss our strategy paragraphs, give you an overview of texts, and then I'm going to give you some group work. 
we're not going to do presentations. I just want to divide you up into your groups. So first of all, I want to say I've been reading your discussion boards and your reflections. You can all write and you can all write really well. And I think that's important because you've gotten those strategy paragraphs back and you've said, oh my gosh, if she didn't give everybody five points, I would have gotten three points or two and a half points or four points. I must not be a good writer. And I, that is not the case. You all are really good writers. Um, I actually enjoy reading all your discussion board posts and your feedback to other people. You're encouraging. You can tell stories. Um, you're doing a great job. It's just that rhetorical analysis in college is not the same as rhetorical analysis in high school. And that can be a, an adaptation. There's a learning curve. Remember at the beginning of the semester, I said, sort of like, you need to see yourselves, as, no matter how accomplished you feel like you are, see yourself as a novice writer with more to learn. Um, because writing is always a process and there is always more to learn. And so you were really good in high school or in your other college writing classes, but now you're starting out with new things. So these strategy paragraphs, um, I thought about reasons why they might not have gone as well. And I think some of you didn't read all the pages on Canvas. Um, I gave you sample paragraphs that I had written. Um, that was on a page in Canvas. Um, I wanted you to look at the strategy lists so that you would know them. Um, I wanted you to narrow your focus to one specific strategy, not ethos, pathos, logos, but compare and contrast or um, description or um, something like that. And it was really important to go deep into how the primary audience would respond and why the audience would respond that way. And those are a lot of things to keep track of. Um, but we'll talk, we'll talk more about this. You do get the opportunity to write another paragraph this week, and I know you're overjoyed with that. Um, the one thing I want to say is ethos, pathos, and logos are not rhetorical strategies for the purpose of this class. They are rhetorical appeals. The strategies are the things that the author does in the text, and the appeals are how the author wants the audience to respond to the strategies. So these are examples of strategies. These and many more are listed on that page that I gave you. And I give you that page again. It was in module two, week two, but you'll also see it on the quiz. And the quiz will require you, some of you have already taken it. I think you've all gotten 10 points. Yay, that's what I want. Um, but there's descriptions of each of the strategies. Um, you're gonna do a strategy paragraph on one of the readings you just read, not on Kelly Linfor, but one of the new essays you read, whether it's Koenig or Harris or McBride or Johnson. I want you this time to identify the rhetorical strategy the author starts with and then provide an example of the strategy from the text showing how it functions as the strategy you name to limit your quotes to fewer than four lines, but you can use more than one quote, analyze how the primary audience responded, and think, since you're focusing on the strategy that the author starts with, think about that strategy as a hook to pull the primary audience in. I know on the first day, or on one of the early days in class, Tuan noticed that, um, E. Shelley Reed started with a hook to say, um, um, E. Shelley Reed started with a hook. And that was a great way to pull people in. And she says, writing is hard, it just stands out to you. So um, now it might be a good time, um, now that you have these strategy paragraphs, it might be a good time to visit your campus writing center. Do any of you remember 
why Rafith said it's a good idea to visit your campus writing center? Um, I remember one of the reasons that he gave was that it's when you're like talking to someone else, they help you like have a discussion about what you're writing and they help you like kind of flesh out your ideas more because when you're forced to kind of explain out loud why you are writing a certain way, you kind of start to connect the dots more and having like someone to bounce your ideas off of really helps you improve your writing. That's really good synopsis, Andy. Um, I like that a lot. I invited two of our tutors to come into um, our session today, and they're in here. Um, so let me get out of this section, go to speaker view, stop share, of course, go to speaker view, and now you only see me. But I want to introduce um, Lily and, um, and Kenzie. They're both former students of mine, and so they know a lot about the things that I'm expecting. They're both tutors in the Writing Center. Um, Lily, well, I'll let them introduce themselves to you and what we do in the Writing Center and how you can, you know, like, they're gonna just tell you anything that they think is relevant before they go back into the Writing Center. Lily, you wanna go first? Sure. Um, hi, I'm Lily. Um, I'm a fourth year psychology major, um, which I know is like weird writing center, but it's helpful. Um, and yeah, like Erin said, she was my first big college course ever in freshman year. Um, and then I started working the following year, so my sophomore year. So I'm going on two years as a tutor now. Did Kenzie wanna? <laughs> yeah, Kenzie, you wanna you wanna introduce yourself? Um, I'm Kenzie. I'm a third year psychology major. Um, I'm also minoring in sociology and political science. Um, same kind of situation. Not really. My majors aren't really connected to writing, but I actually took um, this 220 course my freshman year um, and kind of fell in love with the process of tutoring and was um, really grateful for the opportunities and ideas that this course introduced me to. And so I'm just now um, beginning. I've worked at the Writing Center now for a year. So, yeah. Kenzie, you actually, um, because you were in 220, you were required to go to the Writing Center, um, just like these students are required to go to the Writing Center. And um, talk about like what it was like the first time you went in and um, what it was like subsequent, you know, like what benefit did you get from going into the Writing Center? Yeah, I'm definitely a very um, shy and reserved person in general, and even more so when it comes to my writing. Um, it's a very, you know, personal part of you, even if it's about some very random topic, it shows a lot about you as a person. So I was definitely nervous to kind of open that up to another person's um, perspective. Um, but I found that tutoring really does, uh, or going to tutoring sessions really does help you to expand um, your skills with writing. And not only that, but it brings about a kind of conversation to writing. So it feels less like a chore, less like an assignment, and more like you're connecting with another person, um, just a different level. Um, while at the same time, increasing your knowledge and just becoming a better writer in general, so. You're muted, Erin. Yeah. <laughs> I muted myself for a very good reason. You probably heard the dogs. I'm babysitting um, my daughter's Aus Australian Shepherds and they're, they just went berserk. Somebody rang the doorbell and yeah, it was not good. So I muted myself. So um, Lily or Kenzie, can you um, talk a little bit about like how to prepare to go to a writing center? Um, you know, like what's the best way to get um, information or what's the best way to get help? Uh, yeah, I could speak to that a little bit. Um, I mean, as far as I know, like on our mission statement in the um, 
on our actual website, it's, you know, we talk about um, working with students at any port, part of the writing process. So if you're just bringing a prompt in and need to brainstorm, um, that can be a really fun kind of session to kind of just like, like Kenzie was saying, bounce ideas off of a tutor, or off of someone else. Sometimes it's good to just have another set of eyes. Um, but again, we also work on any different part if you just have one paragraph or the your whole entire draft done. Um, and so I think what would be most helpful, or at least I know what's most helpful for me, both as a tutor and in my own sessions that I've had um, as a student, is just kind of having some more specific questions that you want to ask. Um, sometimes it can be hard to read over your own writing and sometimes you just need a second pair of eyes to make sure it actually makes sense what you're saying um, but having some kind of specific goals for the session like you want to work in your organization or you don't think your analysis is super strong um, in your rhetorical analysis you know um, I feel pretty confident in saying that all of our tutors are very familiar with RWS prompts um, from all professors, but also from Aaron as well. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, so it, you should be able to talk to any of them and have them be familiar with, you know, kind of what the expectations are. Um, and agenda setting is definitely one of the big things that all of our tutors like to do at the beginning of sessions as well, just kind of talking through like what what parts of the essay you're struggling with, what parts you're maybe feeling less confident about. Um, and yeah. So those are all the questions that I have for you, the two of you. Is there anything else you think that would be important for um, this class to know about the Writing Center or anything, anything? Kenzie, Lily? Or are there any questions any of the class has for Kenzie and Lily? I have one. Um, does it run um, like every day or is there specific days? Uh, so yeah, so we are, we're open Monday through Friday. Um, and it's of course all online, um, but we all also have um, e-tutoring, which is a newer um, thing that we've included in our tutoring. So you can, you don't have to necessarily have a live session with a tutor. Um, you can turn in your paper and a tutor will be assigned to it and then they get it back to you within, I think it's 24, 48 hours. Right now it might be 24. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so it's every day, basically whenever you have time. Um, and if you explore the WC Online website, which I'm sure Erin will um, let you know where to find that, um, that will show you all of the availability. Thank you. Any other questions? Um, I was wondering like, what types of writing assignments we would go in for? Cause we have like, the big personal essay, which Aaron assigned us, and then like the little paragraph things. So like if we just wanted help on like a paragraph, would that be something you guys would look at? Absolutely, yeah. We can look at any form of writing at any stage, no matter what length or topic. Any other questions? for them. Okay, then Lily, Kenzie, thank you so much for coming into the class. And um, you know, like, feel free to make appointments with Lily and Kenzie, um, but with any of the other tutors too. Um, Lily and Kenzie have together probably about, I don't, I don't know, um, 20 hours of tutoring between the two of you about them. So you can definitely go in. Um, they are going to be, you'll probably see them pop into our class um, a few times um, later on in the semester when we talk about tutoring a little bit more. Um, but for now, I thank you for coming in. You can go now unless you just want to stay here and talk about anything I don't know <laughs> okay let me um, switch back um, let me take a look at the chat because I know there was a question um, but no not a question 
Okay, so I'm going to share the screen again because I want to talk to you about, you know, like how you can access these services. Um, by the way, there is a new module on Canvas, and I'll show it to you when we're done, but it is about the Writing Center. Um, and there is a link on Canvas to the Writing Center on our homepage so that you can access our website. So the Writing Center is a free service. You pay nothing for this. Well, technically you already paid for it um, because you're paying to go to school here. It's open to um, all SDSU students. So undergraduate and graduate students from all disciplines come to the center and work collaboratively with tutors who coach them through the writing process. Um, and I think it's important to note that we don't just work on RWS writing in the Writing Center. A lot of you are in poli-sci classes and sociology classes and music appreciation classes, and um, you are writing for other classes. And so we work on writing for any class. We also work on resumes, um, business letters, scholarship letters, that second set of eyes that Lily and Kenzie refer to, um, that's really important. And I know um, both Lily and Kenzie come, even though they're tutors, they actually make appointments when they have a big project because they want one of the tutors who are so good at giving feedback to give them feedback. Um, our tutors are all upper level um, students from a variety of academic backgrounds. We have students in finance, we have students um, from kinesiology, we have tutors from kinesiology, finance, music, um, English, sociology, obviously psychology. For some reason, we have a lot of psychology students. Um, they've all been successful in their writing at the university. You can see their bios on our website, which is about to get updated because we have new tutors that are training right now. Um, in fact, all of these tutors, they go through training initially before they start and they continue training in order to learn effective ways of responding to student writing. Um, we have two types of appointments. Um, I believe I believe Lily referred to this. These are we have online real-time appointments, live half-hour appointments that take place during our writing center hours. You and your tutor can share a whiteboard and audio, video, and text chat while you work together. In these, they're synchronous. You own they only work, you can only work with you if you're present. The e-tutoring are e asynchronous appointments that we started last spring because we knew a lot of students didn't have reliable internet and we wanted them still to be able to get feedback. You submit a paper up to six pages on our e-tutoring schedule and you receive written feedback from a tutor within 48 hours. Um, and appointments can be scheduled Sunday through Thursday. We actually have distinct hours. Um, um, Derek asked about that. We're open from, I can't make my head move for some reason. Ah, there we go. Um, we open at nine and go to eight, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We close at five on Thursday and two on Friday. One-on-one um, -on -one tutoring sessions. They'll talk about your writing and offer suggestions. Um, you have a maximum of three appointments a week. Uh, they're 30 minute appointments. Um, you can have up to two appointments in a day. Um, yep. To set up an account, you go to our website. And if you're new to the Writing Center, which I imagine most of you are, you can go to sdsu.mywconline.com, that link is on our homepage and to register for an account. Use your at sdsu.edu email address and your red ID, 
some other information about you as a student. Once you log in, you'll see a page like this that has dates and um, the tutor names and all the appointments in 30 minute increments. Any white box is an open appointment and you just click on that open appointment, that box that has the time and the tutor that you want and you enter what it is that you wanna work on and click create appointment. It will turn yellow and um, you'll get a confirmation at the top of the form. You'll also get a confirmation sent to your at sdsu.edu email and to access your online appointment. Um, you log in again, you click on your yellow appointment and you'll see this um, screen and you just click on start or join online consultation and that's how you'll meet the tutor. Um, let me go back to this screen and talk about the asynchronous appointments. This right here, this box up under where it says SDSU, San Diego State University, this is a drop down menu and it will take you to the e-tutoring appointment and you just choose that option. So, questions for me. Okay, um, let me get to this. It is 10, oh, before we, let me stop share. And I wanna just show you the Writing Center module on Canvas. So let me um, share you, share, share that with you. And, um, let me go to modules. It's all the way at the bottom. This is the Writing Center module. And I have this sort of introduction here. I should have put the link to the Writing Center on there. Um, here's some information. Here's a slide deck on that and actually all those links are on there it just reviews the information i just gave you i copied those slides um, by the way when you register for the writing center and tell me about the process by september 13 you earn five points extra credit so by saturday um i guess i think sunday if you register you will get five extra credit points. You will have to use, you will have to register in order to use the Writing Center, but this will earn you extra credit. You do it by Sunday. And I want you to reflect on the process of your Writing Center visit. So this is how you earn points, and these are required assignments. So in September, you're supposed to go to the Writing Center twice. And so what I'd like you to do is make an appointment. It can be to talk about, to brainstorm for your personal essay. It could be um, to get feedback on your next strategy paragraph that's due on Saturday. I made them due on Saturday this time um, to kind of take some stress off of you with the week. Um, and to give you time to go to the Writing Center. Um, I think that that could be really useful for you. You do have to go twice in September. Thereafter, when you do these reflections, you get extra credit for visiting, but for September it's required since this class focuses on Writing Centers. I want you to ask, answer some questions and then copy paste the report you received to your at sdsu.edu email. Questions about that? Okay. Um, I have a question. Um, yeah. Does So when we go there, does it have to be for an assignment for this class or can it be for like a communications class? It could be for a comm class, that would be totally fine. Okay, thank you. Any? Other questions? 
by the way, this link is on the home page. And so um, the yeah, the writing center module is here. And here's a link for the writing center on the home page. Okay. So let me um, do a new share. New share, back to the PowerPoint, share, yeah. I want you to, um, I'm gonna divide you up into breakout rooms. And I want you, I gave a lot of time to do this for today. And I, the reason I did this is because I want you to share what you read. Um, I saw each of these essays as a literacy narrative. Koenig um, describes in what I found in Standing Rock, he describes um, some literacies that he gained. Um, name them. Talk about how he gained those literacies because that's what he does in there. Um, the middle picture is one of the pictures that was in the original um, Hip Hop Planet that was published in National Geographic. And James McBride describes a literacy he gained and how he gained that literacy. And so I want you to think about that. Remember, you're writing your own literacy narrative. And I wanted you to see examples, not just Kelly Linfor. This is the picture that um, Wynne had in um, Cannon Fodder, where he talks about the value of reading literature, not just the standard literature that has been taught um, in American literature classes, but including literature from different cultures and um, not just American and English literature. And he gives reasons for that. This is a different type of literacy. Take some time to get to know each other because the groups that I put in you in, and it's gonna be random, um, these are gonna be the groups, this is gonna be your peer reading group that you are in where you're brainstorming, you know, like titles for our book that we're putting together, how the book could be organized. Um, you're gonna be reading each other's papers, giving each other feedback. And so you're going to be working with each other for um, about three weeks. So, um, I'm going to divide you into groups. I'm going to record who is in what group and um, in your groups, introduce each other or introduce yourselves. Um, talk about what literacies you read about this week, um, which essays you read, what you learned from them, what literacies you saw, um, ways of learning literacies. And then I'll bring you back into the classroom after about um, 10 to 15 minutes and we'll just wrap up, okay? There are 27 of you, which means we're missing two people. I'm gonna put you into um, six different rooms. Um, which puts, I'm gonna do seven different rooms. That puts three to four of you in each because I want these groups to be relatively small, okay? Um, and you are dismissed to your groups. Hi, so any group, um, 
a group that talked about Hip Hop Planet. What literacy did McBride learn or just dis describe learning in that one? Uh, I'd say it was a cultural literacy because he was learning about the culture that surrounds rap music and hip hop. Yeah, I think that's a, I, I like how you describe that, Anna. Um, cultural literacy different. I was thinking more in terms of hip hop literacy, but I think that, um, I think you're right. I think uh, cultural literacy is a better way to describe that. Definitely more academic. Um, what about, did anybody, any groups talk about Jessica Harris? Okay, how about Harriet Johnson McBride? Yeah, what, what literacy did she gain? Kristen? Um, I don't know if I'd call it like, an identity literacy of like talking about like um, her identity as a disabled person and then like the life around it, or maybe um, like the uh, the conversation of um, if you should like villainize people who disagree with your perspectives from a philosophical philosophical standpoint, like with Singer. And if that, there's a literacy with that. Well, if we think of a literacy as a specialized area of knowledge that allows us to see and understand the world and then communicate, um, she, in a way, I'm gonna go back to Anna, in a way, this is a cultural literacy, um, understanding um, how, disabilities work and or it could be a cultural literacy related to life and the way to view life differently sometimes people look at disabled people and they don't engage with them as if they are human beings um, and so she's communicating the value of her own life and the value of people with disabilities, and I think that's really valuable. Um, did any of you read Bronson Koenig's What I Found in Standing Rock and discuss that one? Okay. Uh, did you only, what are some other ones that you read? because there were a lot. Did you all read the same two? Um, I read the Hip Hop Planet one and then the culinary seasons of my childhood. So what literacy did she gain, Andy? In the, the seasonal, yeah. the culinary one? Um, I was thinking like definitely cultural because she talks about her two, her mom and her dad were both from different cultures. And I feel like food is a really big part of culture. Like when we um, like think about like, like my culture is like Korean, like food is one of like the fundamental aspects of that. And she was talking about how like in different cultures, how food is made and like, I guess like the different types of, I guess. And she gained an appreciation for all types of cuisine. Um, she was talking about how at her school, it was like a, very diverse school so she experienced that and then her two parents were from different backgrounds so she was also able to have that diversity and so she gained a respect for all cultures and that is a literacy in and of itself as opposed to mcbride who gained respect for a single culture also valuable but different and they learned it through a variety of ways mcbride through research through exposure through listening. We have one minute left, and there's one last thing that I want to say is as you approach your own literacy, obviously you're going to have to choose a literacy that you want to write about. But don't go in with a set answer, knowing what you want to say. 
Um, I have a video that I'll be posting this afternoon, and it's about brainstorming as you approach this assignment. And then I'll give you some guidelines for how to draft this. The first draft of your paper will be due 11.59 next Wednesday on the 16th. At that point, we will start um, the peer reading groups and you'll start giving each other feedback. Now, I know how that worked last year and the year before that, and I'm trying to figure out how does that work when we're all on Zoom? We will figure it out. So um, make sure that you watch the short video. It's 20 minutes and then I'll, I know, just another video. Maybe you can speed up my voice. I tend to speak very slowly, so. Um, that's all I've got. Um, I'll stick around for a little bit if you have some questions about anything we've covered or anything you're not sure about, but otherwise you're free to go. Have a great um, weekend. I just had a really quick question about, I guess I was thinking about the like concrete definition for it, I guess. Um, I've put some concrete definitions on Canvas. Um, I would say Take a look at that video you viewed on multiliteracy. I think that that's a good definition. Um, it's a, a specialized area of knowledge. It is a way of viewing the world. It's like when you can read and when you can write, you can read the world and you can communicate about the world. When you have a cultural literacy, for example, Andy, when I visited Korea, one of the things that I learned, you know, if you, if you buy a set of dishes here in the US, they come in this set of four. You know, they never come in a set of four in Korea, Andy. They come in a set of five because there's a different culture and four, do you, I can't remember because it's been a little over 10 years. Four is, what, what does four represent, Andy? Oh, I think it was like a, it's, it, it's like a bad word or something. Yeah, I was thinking it was death, but I can't remember. Yeah, Either way, like, it's not. Or, I can't, I can't remember if it was like Chinese or if it was Korean. Yeah, it was yeah. definitely Korean. And you know, like everything came in a set of five, which mm -hmm. was, to me, that was different. But when I went, I also learned that I should go and I should give gifts when I meet somebody new. We don't do that here in the United States. So I needed to learn things about Korean culture and I learned them differently than I learned um, American culture. American culture, it was just, this is the way I live. In the 60s and 70s when I was growing up, all the people in my neighborhood did all the same things and that's how I learned my culture. Andy, you've learned two different cultures simultaneously. And so you, you that's a good direction to go. It's the way we see the world. It's the way we communicate in the world. And I think that's a good direction. So you can start thinking about cultural literacy or technological literacy. There's gaming literacy. If you are a gamer, you know what I'm talking about. Um, there's sports literacy. Um, if you play a sport, if you play um, soccer, football, basketball, you know how to read a field. You know how to read the playing field um, in ways that I don't. Um, and it, you communicate that way, you think that way. And I think that you have a lot of flexibility in choosing a literacy. That was a really good question. Anna. Okay, thank you so much. That actually clears up a lot. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes, I do. Um, this is like not to do with the literacy, but um, I got a 10 out of 20 on like the literacies in you and like the comment, it said that I didn't reply to people, but I replied to three people and um, it says that I replied to all of them on Thursday. So it was like within the due date too. So I don't know if I did it wrong or like what I Let did. Let me take a look, Jordan. I will take okay. a look at that, okay? Okay. And if you no, because I want to get that right. Yeah, I did. I replied to Michaela, Kyle, and Teresa, if that helps. Okay. But.
I'll fix, I'll fix that right away, Jordan. Okay, thank you so much. Sure, no Have problem. Mm -hmm. Kristen? Mm -hmm. You all done? Okay.